Hi guys, it's Pastor Louie, and I am so thrilled to be a part of Group Week, especially coming down at the end of this segment. It's been a great run, right? And family groups are going great. I just want to tell you I love you, A. And I want to tell you I believe in the students at Passion City Church like nothing else. And I love Grant. I love the team. I love the way God is raising up a new generation in our house. And thank you for inviting me into your screen, whether that's on your phone or your computer or wherever you are right now at home or at school or riding around in a car or whatever you're doing right now. Thank you for giving me a few moments to jump in. And I believe God's going to say something amazing in these next few minutes that we have together. I want to show you a photo before we get started. Check this out. See that? Do you know what that is? Do you know who that is? Does anybody know? Show of hands if you know what that is. Okay, it's one of the most amazing human stories of all time, what you're looking at right now. And I'm gonna come back in just a few minutes and tell you about it. I think you need to be prepared for your mind to completely just explode when you hear the story of what's going on in that photo. And I wanna rally around three words today. It's my prayer, it's my hope, and it's God's expectation and possibility for you as a student at Passion City Church and as a person in God's story, a person that God has a plan for in the future of His great church in this world. You know, you, your plans may be to go into engineering or education or the arts and entertainment, or maybe you're really great at sports, or maybe you have no clue what you're great at yet. Who knows what road you're gonna be on? But the great purpose of life is for all of us to see ourselves in God's plan of building up His church on this planet so that more and more people can hear the story about Jesus, can celebrate the greatness of God. That's kind of what all is wrapped up in that picture that you were just looking at. And I wanna come back and talk about that in just a moment. But I wanna start with Jesus. And I wanna start with what I believe is a great text for us today to jump out of, to think about these three words. Three words I want you to really take stock of because I believe God wants to write these three words on your heart today. It might give you a roadmap of where you're going in the next few months, in the next few years, as God's making you into the person that he wants you to be and putting you in the story that he wants you to be in. When Jesus opened his ministry, that means when he went public. He's 30 years old, he's already been through all the same stuff you've been through. He grew up on planet Earth, grew up in a family, had siblings and had all the issues of being an adolescent, a teenager, uh, been through his 20s, and now he's 30 years old and he's announcing to the world that he is the Son of God and he's come to this world for a purpose, that he's the fulfillment of all the promise that have come before. And so he comes to the synagogue on the day of the Sabbath. He's been in the wilderness. He's been fasting and preparing for this ministry. He's been tested and tempted by the enemy. He's endured all that by the word of God. And now he's back in his hometown of Nazareth. And this is what Luke records in chapter four. An eyewitness account of the life of Jesus Christ. It says, and he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. So now he's in a hometown crowd. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. And he stood up to read the scroll on that day. So let's stop right there and talk about word number one. Word number one I wanna encourage you with today is the word rooted. Rooted. Can you say it with me? Let's just all say it. If you're in a place where you can say it out loud and you mean it, let's say it together. The word for now, the first word is rooted. This is the way I wanna encourage you. I believe it's the way God wants to encourage you today. And it's what we see in the life of Jesus. Jesus went to the synagogue as was his custom. Do you know what that means? It meant on his list of things to do, getting to worship with the people of God in his hometown was one of the things that he was always going to do. It wasn't like a third tier option for him. It was in the heart of what he wanted to be about. And I wanna encourage you in that. You know, life right now is crazy, it's hectic, it changes, schedules change from this year to next year, from what you're doing in school right now to what you're gonna be doing in school in the spring, it's always changing and moving and the variables and where you gotta be and what you gotta do. I wanna encourage you as a 16 year old or a 14 year old or an 18 year old to say, you know one thing I'm gonna do? It's gonna be my custom to show up with the people of God in the house of God in my town. That's not me saying as your pastor, man, we just need to count one more body at Passion City Church or one more person who shows up for a family group. That's you saying, God, trees grow, limbs become strong, fruit is born, and generations are changed by oaks, 
not by little tiny saplings that are dug up every few weeks and moved around somewhere else. And I know the story is going to be, hey, the hot new thing's over here, or the latest greatest thing is over there. But God is saying to you, if you want me to use you and grow you and develop you, and you want to see yourself in the story of what God is doing at Passion City Church in the months, the days, the years to come, then you got to be rooted in this house. You have to make the decision. I am going to, as my custom, show up, not at the synagogue, but to show up in the people of God, in the family of God. And I'm going to be a part of that. That's how you grow strong. And it's how you grow tall. It's how your branches spread. And it's how the people around you get to recognize what God has on your life and then raise you up into the place that you can then begin to serve the house of God and lead the people of God. As his custom, he was in the synagogue. Second word I wanna talk about also starts with an R and it's the word rise. It says he stood up to read. I'm not trying to read too much into the text. It's just that God's plan for you is not a steady state. It's that you will begin to see yourself rising up into the person God wants you to be. We have a monthly gathering here. Hello, it's called the steady state. No. <laughs> it's called the decline. No, who wants to come to that? Hey, hey guys, you should come with me. Passion City Church, Wednesday night. We're all going to sort of drift down into mediocrity. It's going to be amazing. We're just going to let the gravitational forces of culture just sort of grind us down into the ordinary. No, it's called the rising. You know why? Because we are advancing. We are growing. We are gaining. We're taking ground. We're maturing. We're becoming more wise, more discerning, more sturdy, more strong. Why? Because we're rooted. And out of those roots, we're getting the nourishment that we need to grow up into the people God wants us to be. I want to encourage you today to rise above ordinary people, and they're all around you. Rise above people who cannot see past the console of their video game. I'm encouraging you to rise above that. I'm encouraging you to rise above whatever you've been through, the, the, the crud, the hurt, the disappointment that you have had to deal with in your life. I'm encouraging you to rise above that. I'm going to encourage you to rise above the easy way, the shortcut, and to say, I know that there is a great God who has called my name, and he has called me for great things in this life, and I'm going to rise up into what God has for me. I'm going to resist anything that tries to cause me to settle and offer God less than my very best. Listen to what Jesus said when he read. He read Isaiah 61, and it's all about rising. He said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. That means people who are, who are without the fullness of God are gonna get the fullness of God. They're gonna rise up into the fullness of God. Send me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. So if sin's got a chokehold on me, if depression's got a chokehold of me, anxiety's got a grip on me, if some sin has got its talons into my heart, Jesus is saying, I've come to set people free so that they can soar up into what God is dreaming about for their lives. I've come to give sight to the blind. I've come to release those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In other words, what God wants to do in your life is to pull you up and to set you apart so that he can send you out to do something great in this world. And that's a mindset. It's called rooted to rise. I'm going to plant so that I can blossom and I am going to move forward with God in the days ahead in my life. No matter what is holding me back, I have a Savior who is anointed and sent by God to release me and send me forward. And that last word also starts with an R, rooted, rise, and run. I want to encourage you to run the race that God has put in front of you. The scripture says it this way, let us throw off every sin and anything that entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is marked out for us. God's not asking you to run somebody else's race. He's not asking you to do anything other than to stay in the lane he's put you in and to rise up into the calling that he's put on your life. And right now you are a leader in this church. That's not going to happen five years from now, 10 years from now. Right now, you are God's person to take your place in this story 
and to be God's instrument to shine his light and favor on the city of Atlanta. And I know that you can do it. Let's go back to that photo for a moment because I think it's gonna tell us how. So in that photo, do you know who that is? Anybody know who that is? That guy, the older guy that's pushing the, the contraption there, that guy's name is Dick Hoyt. And Dick Hoyt is a monster triathlon marathon champion. In the contraption is his son, Rick Hoyt. And Rick Hoyt was born with cerebral palsy. And when he was born, Dick Hoyt, his father, discovered one day as he was out running and he'd put his son in one of those things that you see the runners pushing on the street, he discovered that his son came alive when he was pushing him down the street of the neighborhood in that stroller, that somehow joy came into his life and he was expressing that in his own way that this, the wind is in my face and my dad is at my back and this is amazing. And so the dad thought, I'm just gonna always keep doing this. And so in competition and in all manner of races, the father has pushed the son. Do you wanna hear a little bit about what they have done together? Check it out. Dick Hoyt pushing Rick Hoyt. And in a, in a triathlon, which they've done a lot of, um, 257 triathlons they've done together, the dad pulls him in a swim in a raft, fits a seat for him on the bike in the cycle, and then pushes him in this thing that you see in the running part of the triathlon, 257 triathlons. Six of them were Ironman triathlons, seven half Ironmans, 22 duathlons, 72 Boston marathons. This guy has run 97 half marathons, 219 10K races, and the list just goes on and on and on. 88 years old, the dad now, 55 years old, still doing it. You know why? The dad said, when I do this, it brings him pleasure. And that fuels me to go out and do something extraordinary and superhuman time after time after time. He discovered that I had a passion for triathlons, but now that passion has a greater purpose, and the purpose is the joy of my son. I'm telling you, if you can see that in whatever you're good at today, whether it's schoolwork or relationships or sports or maybe it's some kind of engineering thing or math or design or the arts or entertainment or whatever your lane is. And you could say, in this lane, God's given me a passion, but man, I'm discovering something even bigger than my passion. And that is when I run this race with all of my heart for the glory of God, He takes delight in what I do and it gives me even greater delight in what I do. It doesn't make what I do easier. It might actually make what you do harder. But yet he takes joy in it and you take greater joy in it. And all of a sudden there's a purpose in it. And it's not, I ran uh, 257 triathlons. That's not Dick Hoyt's story. Dick Hoyt's story is, my son had a ball 257 times. And that means more to me than just accomplishing the task and winning the race. Root in the house of God. Root in this house. We love you and we will serve you and we will lead you and encourage you and inspire you. Rise above whatever it is that's trying to pull you down to less than God's best and run today faithfully towards Jesus with that joy in your heart that you've discovered the greatest purpose of all and that's doing whatever you do for the glory of God. I love you, we love you. Thanks for letting me be a part of your world today. Thanks for joining us. If you're a high school student in or around Atlanta, we would love to get you plugged in to one of our family groups at Passion Students. Head to our website for more information.